Hi everybody, my name is Jim and welcome back to another episode of The Lake Effect Gardener. June tour time. Yay! This probably is my most favorite tour to date. I think the first time that I showed you my garden last year when the channel was brand new, it was the June tour was my first introduction to what I have growing. So even to see the difference between last June tour and this June tour, the change has been substantial and I know that has a lot to do with my philosophy and the way that I've changed the way that I'm growing all the research that I've done for dig for victory slash victory gardening etc etc it has really paid off and I'm really really pleased but like all tours we're gonna start off first scaling up to the top of the garage so you guys can see an overhead view of what it looks like so far this month. So let's carefully go up there and see what's going on. Big difference, huge difference, wonderful difference. <laughs> very, very happy. So things are just exploding in the garden right now. And I'm not by any means, you know, bragging or patting myself on the back because this is way beyond my expectations at this point. I've never had things so far along in the garden ever, ever. I posted on Instagram two yellow straight neck squash variety bog standard <laughs> that I had harvested. And the comments that I've gotten from that already, everyone's like, whoa, already? Are you kidding me? I know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm really, really pleased. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out on the patio. I just want to show you a couple of things there. We're going to make our way through the pergola area and then we'll enter the veg garden and I will, I'm going to be as detailed as I possibly can without boring you to tears. I do not want this video to be over an hour, but there is a lot to cover and I don't want to miss a single bit of it. Lastly, we will be going into the tunnel so that I can reveal the final little piece that I'm sure you're all waiting with bated breath to see the last piece of the puzzle. It has been put in and you guys will get to see it. So buckle up and I hope you guys enjoy what you see. All right, well, we're gonna start out here on the patio. I just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, the cuttings or the seedlings, tree seedlings that my friend Jessica gave to me. So it looks like the crab apple and the hawthorn have both taken and the other four have not but I'm gonna let these ride just the same you never know they could actually come to life at some point all right gladiolas are getting really tall now I suspect there will be some flower spikes pretty soon really excited about that my Stelladoro daylilies are finally coming into bloom. They are beautiful, and I do love that creamy 
butter color they have and the scent they have a really really nice scent as well this sage is nearly as tall as me now and there's lots of bud going on here actually there are some blooms the bees and the butterflies absolutely adore this things are beginning to fill in which I'm really pleased about so this is the um, balsam that I planted seeds and you can see how tall the liatris is getting so things are really beginning to fill out and the hollyhocks in the background are starting to put on buds as well so it won't be long before those start performing and all the cut and come again zinnias that i have here are doing beautifully we already have one blossom which i'm over the moon about and my cosmos are also doing really really well and i don't know if you had seen my post on facebook or instagram my gertrude jekyll has already started producing blooms i already have taken off a few of them but um, it's already throwing up many more and it's beginning to climb gosh these david austin roses do not disappoint dahlias are doing okay it's starting to throw up some flowers happy to see that all right let's go into the veg garden normally i started the garage but now that i wanted to show you the pergola area okay so things look pretty good in here I'm a little disappointed with my onions they're toppling over and for some reason the squirrels and the chipmunks just love digging in this bed and I think it has to do with the fact that they've buried their nuts in here um, which is really annoying because I know that onions do not like to have their roots disturbed at all so I doubt I'm going to be getting much of a crop out of here but I'll grow them on just the same whatever I can get I can get my broad beans have all toppled over <laughs> because of the weight of the pods okay these weren't terribly sturdy plants to begin with but I do have maybe two or three large pods on each plant okay so those need to be harvested soon. I want to have this out so that I can plant something else in here. In my original plan, I think I had said I was going to plant beets in here, but I think I'm going to be doing something that has a little bit more longevity just because it's right next to the garage. I want to have something that's going to probably coast through the winter. So I'm thinking maybe purple sprouting broccoli or maybe some more Swiss chard or something like that. The chamomile is looking lovely it's starting to bush up nicely starting to throw look at all the blossoms I'm gonna have to harvest that soon too the carrots slash beets not beets radishes all right there we go I'm just gonna take a little collection here so this is the um, variety champion so I'm going to be getting these probably pickled or roasted and processed for later eating because I do have a lot of them but you can see in between the carrots are beginning to come up all right and I did this is the row of Danvers carrots and then this is the row of Scarlet Nance so once these radishes are up then I'm gonna let the carrots grow on the greens are looking quite good Swiss chard is getting quite big this is uh, the variety is Lucillus okay and all the beets are starting to come in between so I'm going to start pricking these out I think I might do some transplanting as well just because they are really really kind of cozy in there and like I said I'm going to grow these on for the greens and then whatever is left I will leave to um, you know so I can harvest the roots the kale is doing okay something is nibbling at it I'm not sure what it is I haven't seen anything on it I don't think it's slug damage though oh my goodness and not a lot of my calendula came up in this little row here 
there are a few plants, okay. But then I've had this borage that came up out of nowhere. Gladly take it, friend of uh, pollinators alike. And this nasturtium popped up here, looking very happy. I did plant some dill here. And I just love the way this looks. It's going to flower already. Um, so I'm going to cut that back to see if I can get a second growth off of it. And some more borage, which is a volunteer. Love my volunteers. Let's come over here to this bed. So my delicata is really beginning to fill out and you can see it's starting to climb. Remember, this is my, my box spring trellis that I created. So it's looking very pleased for sure. And then <laughs> the Burgess buttercup is really beginning to soar. I'm, I only had to train it at the very bottom and it's pretty much doing its own thing which I'm pleased about. In this hole here, I had originally planted cannellini beans. Nothing happened. I think they may have been dug up, but I only had 25 seeds. I planted all of them and nothing happened. So these are black eyed peas or cow peas. And I just sowed those maybe about a week ago. So they're starting to make an appearance. But again, there are holes here that need to be filled. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and probably do a couple of more sowings. My cucumbers are absolutely taking off and if you recall this is the variety called Dasher and it lives up to its name. It really does. And I'm beginning to already get some fruit off of it. Extremely prolific. These are the Landreth bush beans and yay for little flowers. So it's starting to go to flower which means I'll be getting beans off of it pretty soon. Very excited. Same thing goes with this cucumber. Absolutely nuts. This is the Slice Master cucumber. Okay, this is another eating cucumber and it's already going nuts and you can see I've got some cucumbers forming already. Um, yes, <laughs> my zucchini slash summer squash bed is monstrous. I'm just going to kind of make my way through here. I did post on Facebook and Instagram that I've started to yield some summer squash and there's some more down there and down here. So this is absolutely the earliest I've ever harvested. And if you recall, <laughs> last year I didn't get anything. So I'm pleased about that. Um, back here, we've got a sweet dumpling that is just starting to send up its growing vine, so I'm going to train that up. And then next to that, I have a cornucopia gourd, which is also starting to mature. Zucchini, zucchini, zucchini. Oh my gosh, where do I begin? Where, where, where do we go? Where do we go? I think I saw one. Ugh, pardon me. Oh yeah, that's ready to pick. So. I'm going to get that out, but it's doing very, very well. All these plants, I have to admit, I had a lot more zucchini formed, but again, critters, I don't know what it is because they do it under cover of darkness, I think, have, um, have definitely taken some for their own, which is super annoying. There's some more down here. All right. And here's one. This is pretty. It's got some stripes on it. Lovely. Very, very pleased. Oh, there's going to be lots of bread. <laughs> I'm going to be cooking a lot of stuff. I want to hopefully get some stuff frozen as well. But I have to admit most of the um, putting up of food I'm going to be doing is going to be canning instead of freezing. My Minnesota midget and my sugar babies are absolutely rampant. Absolutely, look at this. Sugar baby. And I'm pleased to announce I have my first fruit setting, which I'm really, really excited about. And there's just flowers all over the Minnesota midget. And you can see where here's a female flower right here. You can see the fruit starting to form at the bottom. So I'm hoping to get a lot of fruit off of the Minnesota midget. 
the, uh, the really the difference for me this year is that I've not only training it upwards but extremely nutrient dense soil extremely nutrient dense and I have it mulched and I'm watering constantly so for all those melon growers out there for the transatlantic melon challenge they are greedy don't forget do not neglect their watering schedule whatever you do potatoes are coming along um, I have some gaps <laughs> some of them didn't come up some of them were dug up so what I did was I planted some beets in the holes here I'm sure here's another hole I don't know if you can see it right here okay another hole thank you squirrels and then here I had a, a leftover savoy green cabbage seedling that I just kind of popped in there so I didn't want any space to go to waste. I'm, I'm kind of neurotic about it now. Oh, my trellis is looking so beautiful. Look at these blooms. I mean, that contrast, the green and then the dark, dark purple and against the white. Look at that. Oh, I'm in just love with this obelisk. I really am. Okay, let's keep going. Tomatoes are looking fabulous. I have already done a major prune of these. I have tied them up twice already, and I have taken out suckers. So they're, they're, they're going for it. Now, if you remember, I have the plants that my father gave me and this is a mixture between a Goliath um, plum tomato and then another plum tomato. And he showed me what it was. I think maybe I can throw it up on the screen here. It's from Italy. Like it's like really, really Italian, which I thought was cool. So <laughs> these are doing super, super well. You know what? I need to go on the other side because I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember what the varieties are. Oh, boy. Okay, so here is the Goliath that my father gave to me. And then we have the New Yorker. Yes, New Yorker. This is Glamour. Heinz. And I think Heinz is a bush variety, but I'm trading it as a cordon anyways. Beefsteak. And then Aroma Plum Tomato. Okay. And there are just gobs and gobs and gobs of flower trusses. There is some fruit beginning to set on all of these plants. Some are a little bit more further along than others. So, yes. It's not even July and I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed and excited as to how much fruit I'm getting already off of these plants. Incredible. Here is my pickling cucumbers. Remember, I've got homemade pickles on this side, and then I've got national pickling on this side. They are squirming their way up. Okay. And I do believe, where did I see? Right here, some lovely fruit forming. So it won't be long until I get some pickles going. On this side, we have the French horticultural bean growing up and it's really doing it. Look, it's almost at the top. So I haven't noticed any flowers off of these yet, which is fine. Um, however, we've got some, this is volunteer dill. Okay. It's really, really tall. I also have a volunteer tomato plant here that's kind of hiding. All right, but the, miraculously enough, I don't have to trellis this because the beans are doing it for me. Great, some more dill. All right. All right, let's come over here. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Brussels sprouts are looking really, really nice, but they're beginning to crowd out the romaine and the romaine is starting to get tall, which means that it's on its way to bolting, which means I need to get these puppies out. But, I will give a lot of room for the Brussels sprouts to kind of spread out as well. So they're looking good. They don't look that much bigger from the last time I saw them, I guess, last time I showed you. So 
and I'm just going to keep an eye on them. They may need a really good feed. These potatoes are pathetic, I have to say. Not a lot going on here, and what is here is a little bit leggy and spindly, so I'm not sure, you know, what kind of yield I'm going to get out of here. However, I do have some space in here that I'm going to be utilizing. I haven't planted anything else in here yet. I'm still kind of mulling it over, but I want something to be, you know, something that I can get out quickly. These are my um, Cayuca Gold and then my Yukon Golds. So these are my earlies and my mid-season. So these are going to come out faster than that potato bed because those are my main crop. But we'll get to that. I'm sure I will find something to throw in here. <laughs> my brassicas are looking amazing. They really, really are. Oh, and where do I begin? Two rows of Calabrese um, broccoli. Then moving on over here, we've got the row of snowball cauliflower, soft blanching cauliflower, savoy cabbage, Danish ball head, two rows of purple, two rows of early green, and then two rows of collards. Look at this ridiculous collards. It's just massive. <clears throat> Excuse me. Very pleased. Very, very well watered, my friends. Different from last year. And I think that the location is better, to tell you the truth. It gets a little bit more sun than its other place. That it was, well, the other place that I've had them last year. And they certainly get a lot more water. Again, I mulched and I fed two things that I didn't do before. Before, excuse me. I kind of, <laughs> you have to pardon me. It's, it's still early morning, but I wanted to get out here before the sun because it's supposed to be a scorcher today. My chilies are doing amazingly. I'm getting lots of beautiful fruit all over. So these are the cayenne peppers. I accidentally planted a Slovana here. Okay, it's doing pretty well. But this is also behind it, Serrano. Okay, and I've got some chilies on there too. And then moving inwards, this is the Bajio, the one that I always butcher. And I don't see any fruit on this yet. However, I do see lots of flowers. And then lastly, we have my namesake, Big Jim. And I did spy one. Where are you? Let's get in there. That is ridiculous. Okay. That's a chili. That's my hand. Okay. So it's really living up to the name. <laughs> and I've got a few more lurking in the shadows somewhere down here. Yeah. All right. My Yolo Wonder Green, or sorry, Bell Pepper is already producing beautiful fruit. Lots and lots of it too. Look at these. I've never had peppers this early. Remember guys, I started these from seed. That's really the key. I am never gonna go back to buying store-bought plants ever for peppers. There's no, no point. If I can start yielding this early, these are the Slovanas. And there's at least three peppers on each plant so far with more flowers to come. So these need to be harvested pretty soon. I'm going to harvest a few and maybe put it in an omelet or something. Peas are doing well. These are the ones that I had started in the tunnel and the trays. Okay, so they're producing first. All right. And I've had a few of them and they are spectacular. Down here, we have the ones that I direct sowed maybe about a month ago. Okay, remember Burpina, who can forget that wonderful name. There's some flowers forming, but um, nothing, nothing fruit-wise yet. Volunteer Tomato, leaving it to its devices. Thank you very much for your volunteering. 
This is the progress pea. It is in complete flower right now. So I'll be getting fruit off of this soon. Another volunteer tomato. Good grief. And then, I can't remember the name of this one, but this is the um, snow pea. And it's all ready. There's lots and lots of adorable little pea pods happening on here. Okay. Bear with me, friends. Bear with me. We're almost there. These are doing okay. All right. Remember, I've got the two patty pans in here and two patty pans in here. This patty pan looks pretty pathetic, but I'm going to leave it. Um, these are red peppers looking. I mean, if you see the comparison between these and the ones that I had, you know, in the pepper bed, it's night and day. Some black beauty eggplant and my parsley and Tulsi are doing okay. Now this is what I'm really angry about. My sweet corn. Something is getting in here and literally taking stalks down one stalk at a time. I have more corn seed sown in the greenhouse. I am I am bound and determined to get myself some corn this year, but I don't know what it is. I'm really, really angry. It's, it's, it's very frustrating. <laughs> and they're so elusive. That's what makes it more annoying. It's like, I want my day in court. I want to be able to chase them out of the garden or do something, but it's like, I don't even know what it is. Just comes here and just nibbles them down, takes them down right at the stalk. It could be a field mouse. Same thing happened over here with my Uchiki curry. Okay, look, this is the main growing vine. It's been severed for no particular reason at all. Luckily, these resilient little plants, it's sending up a secondary vine, so I'm happy about that. And hopefully there'll be more. There's another one over there, so I'm hoping to get fruit off of these for sure. But these squash are ridiculous. Look at this golden hubbard. It's massive, absolutely massive. Look at this blue Hubbard. I've got really, really big hands, guys, okay? They're large. Look at the comparison, unbelievable. It's like a lily pad. Oh my goodness. I'm not seeing any fruit so far on the blue Hubbard. Oh, I stand corrected. There's just a little baby right there. Hope that comes to something. The acorn squash is this mass right here. And I know for certain, ah, uh, yes. Let me get around here. Oh, we have some lovely fruit forming and there are fruit setting everywhere for these. Hip hip hooray. Remember friends, none of my squash did a thing last year. They all died, they were not happy. They didn't produce anything. So the fact that they're looking like this right now, this early in the season just makes me so incredibly happy. My spaghetti squash is really going for it. Now it's, it's starting to train itself on the other side here. I'm gonna kind of pull this and get it trained on its proper side so that the butternut squash, which is also getting quite big, will be able to make its way up this side. This lettuce needs to be harvested pretty soon, but I did direct sow some spinach in here and um, some more lettuce over on the other side. The sunflowers that have been saved are looking rather large and beautiful. So that's great. You notice this large stick in the back. <laughs> There's a volunteer morning glory that started growing. So I stuck the stick back here. It'll look pretty. It'll grow if taller, if, if tall, if not taller than the sunflowers. Eek, I don't know where to go. Okay, I'm gonna go over this way. And I've got more sunflowers back here. They're starting to put on some growth here. I did plant some pinto beans in here. Okay, I'm trying to utilize as much space as I possibly can. 
and then I brought more bags online, but these bags are not doing well. I did, a lot of my beats were torn out, okay? You can see one beat. <laughs> I re-sewed and re-sewed and re-sewed. These are pinto beans as well, and I did re-sew some more in the bag. Some were torn out, and these are new, these four bags, and these are all black-eyed peas, okay? So I'm not surprised I'm not seeing anything so far. All right, the pumpkins are <laughs> beyond my expectations. I have the two Rouge Vif du Temps Cinderella pumpkins, and then the rest are all Howden field pumpkins, and they're really reaching for the stars, I'll tell you what. And <sighs> my first pumpkin. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. So we're getting on to the beginning of July. I'm gonna need to give these a really, really good feed, okay? I'm gonna have to give all of these squash a really good feed. They're gonna need that extra boost to get them through the season. All right, moving right along, friends. This is my eggplant. I've never had eggplant this big before. <laughs> this, I mean, it's just, it's massive. The leaves, again, the leaves are massive and they're now beginning to throw out blossom. So I have six Midnight Moon and then four Black Beauty and they're all doing the same pretty much in the way of growth. They're all looking really, really happy here. The Midnight Moon is supposed to yield earlier than the, the Black Beauty, so I'll have a succession. The beans have really made their way. <laughs> yes, they have gone all the way to the top and now they're beginning to loop around each other that's why i didn't you know i should have made these canes taller but never mind like i said it's hard to come by anything taller than a six foot cane here in the states unless you're going to pay out the nose and i'm not willing to do that my gigantes is already beginning to set flower and the flowers are gorgeous i didn't realize well i figured that they'd be pretty big seeing as though you know, the beans themselves are massive. But my goodness, do they have any scent, I wonder? I'm gonna find one that doesn't have any bugs lurking. Nope, no they don't. No matter, they're beautiful. And then, and this is another thing I've gotta take care of, more radish. I'm gonna have radishes coming out my eyeballs here. Look at that. This is French breakfast. So I'm gonna give these a good wash and roast the whole thing. Another thing you could do with radishes that I was kind of, kind of uh, researching is that you can dehydrate them and turn them into a powder, which, hey, that's great. You can add it to soups and stews and stocks and things like that. A great way to use it, it gives it you know, a little bit more body. So things are really filling out here, friends. I can't, I'm really, really happy with everything. And now that I'm on summer vacation, I can tend to the needs of each individual little adorable green friend of mine. Okay, remember, make your mama proud. All right, I've got one more thing to show you. But before I do that, this is the Rudbeckia, the black-eyed Susan that I had grown from seed. And it didn't come to anything last year. And now look at that gorgeous center. It's almost like a burgundy center. It's gorgeous. I love it. And these are snapdragons that overwintered. Hmm. Okay. I still have some more things that need to go out. These lilies I'm gonna put in the near the pergola. Those are my, my sets, my onion sets, and my leeks. Um, and then I've got some flowers here. I've got some Nicotiana and some uh, blue salvia that I'm gonna plant over at the patio. All right, time to go into the tunnel. <laughs> now, I know you've seen this already um, rather you know, it was 
how long ago? A week ago. Not much has changed in here. However, however, I have managed to do some sowing, some seed sowing, and I'm already getting results, which I'm really, really happy with. My tomatoes are looking great. They look very happy. They did not really sustain too much stress upon transplanting, which I, it was expected. So I'm happy. They're going to start to put on some new growth and then I can start to train them. Uh, let me show you what I've planted in the way of seed in here. I've done a row of arugula or rocket. I did two rows of spinach. Those are not up yet. Oh, I did three rows of spinach. Okay. They're not up yet. I did a row of Kyoto Mizuna. I did a row of all year long lettuce, butter crunch lettuce, rouge de verre, okay, and Vivian. And Vivian is the romaine lettuce. And then in this whole section here, I did lima beans. So, how many rows did I do? One, two, three, four, five, six. I did six rows, three, um, three per row. Okay, so that'll be a decent amount of plants and you get a lot off of one plant, so I'm happy about that. Hopefully they all come to something. I found these baskets at, on the curb. They are really, really cool looking. They're really nice. And I can't believe someone threw them out. <laughs> They're matching. They're lovely. All right. I'm going to have to start thinking about getting this a clear path upwards beyond what I have. Okay. These are the two sugar baby watermelons. They're really beginning to take off. I've got to, I've got to continue the trellising. So, whew, wonderful. The bitter gourd has also really taken off or bitter melon. So yeah, I've got some stuff to do. Now, not much has changed here. Like I said, things are a little bit bigger, but not by much. But I know you've all been waiting for this section right here. You know, I was talking about this area of the palette and of what I was going to do and I had something on hand. Oh, aren't I so mean? Oh, I'm going right around it. You can't see it, can you? Okay, sorry. I'm not going to be a jerk about it. This is an early 1900s pedestal sink. <laughs> that I got for next to nothing at a, at a salvage yard. And the idea was for me to... It's, it's lovely, isn't it? I was going to put this in this house, okay? So I've been hanging on to it for 11 years. Plus, I was going to put it in this house, in this bathroom. I loved the look of it. I loved the shape of it. I thought it was just a classic, classic, old-fashioned look. And then I finally got it into the bathroom, and it was entirely too short. It was ridiculous. Uh, yes, to brush my teeth, to do anything, I would have to bend over more so than I normally do. So, yes, so I just kept it. And now it's not plumbed in yet. I still have to do that. Uh, but this will be the perfect place for me to wash my hands in the garden. Yay! Any wastewater that I'm uh, plan or that's going to be going in the basin, I will collect, okay, in some side, kind of a container or perhaps this watering can, okay? And then I can reuse the water. And I threw a shelf over top of it. I know you were all waiting to see that, weren't you? Well, it has to be about 100 years old, I'd have to say. So I also brought my box fan in here just to uh, help out with some circulation because it is rather muggy. All right, my friends, that is everything. Let us go back into the shed now and have a little chat.
for that sink, I'm going to not be like plumbing it in with, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to be running official lines from the house or anything like that, but I will be plumbing it in with a hose. So it's going to be hose water. Okay. It's water nonetheless. And it's just going to be a place for me to, you know, wash up and things like that. I won't be utilizing soap. If for some reason I do, it will be something that is completely safe for nature, something that's maybe glycerin based, something that's not going to, you know, damage or harm my plants. And if I do end up using soap just to be safe, I will obviously not water my crops with it. <laughs> Definitely not. I will, I will spread it elsewhere in the yard. So really excited about that though, because usually I either have to go right for the hose which sometimes can be a little fiddly or I have to go into the house and sometimes I'm just too lazy and I don't feel like walking back to the house to do that. So it's going to come in handy and it's such a beautiful piece of furniture, isn't it? <laughs> porcelain. It's porcelain. So what'd you guys think? I'm, oof, I'm overwhelmed. I'm not overwhelmed in a bad way though. I'm overwhelmed in a wonderful way. And the thing is, it's, yes, I'm at that maintenance point now where I'm going to take care of, but I'm still going to be planting things. That corn bed, eek, something needs to be done. I will have corn. Gosh, darn it. So that needs to be taken care of. And I already have to start thinking about how I'm going to be processing this food so I can store it. I've never had to worry about that this early. I do want to eat a lot of fresh, but I also want to have a lot stored for the winter months. So there will be videos on that, rest assured. So the next video will likely be a make do Monday, but don't hold me to it. There might be some other project that needs to go first. <laughs> Who knows, but I do have I definitely know what I'm going to be doing for Make Do Monday when it hop when it pops up again. And it's not going to be entirely, it's going to be more of like a DIY. Okay. But it's still Make Do. It's definitely probably not a wartime Make Do, but it's something that any one of you out there can do for pennies on the dollar. And it's going to be a really big help in the garden as well. So looking forward to that. So... I hope you are all doing really, really well. I hope that your gardens are just flourishing right now. I still have a lot to do out here. I've got to do some more training. I need to do some more pruning and some more weeding. You guys know the drill. But if you are new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, thumbs up, and don't forget to leave your comments. And one last little little item. I would like to wish everybody here in the States a very, very happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. I hope you all can spend time with family and celebrate this fabulous holiday. And I would also like to send a very, very happy, happy birthday to my dear friend, Vivi Gregory, who also celebrates her birthday on Independence Day, the 4th of July. So, if you guys are friends with Vivi, make sure you go to her page and send her a huge shout out for her birthday because she deserves it. All right, friends, I hope you're all well. I can't wait to see you guys soon and I will be back for more fun in the garden. Take care. So long. <laughs>